and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dahlman. On today's episode, we are once again sitting down with our guest, Ruth Larson, now chairman of the James City County Board of Supervisors and representative for the Berkeley District. Welcome, Ms. Larson. Thank you. How are you, Renee? I am great. I'm glad to have you back. I appreciate you having me back. Well, since you've been on, you have been elected as chair for the Board of Supervisors. Tell us about that. What does that mean to be chairman of the board? Well, technically what it means is that I run the meetings. Okay. In Virginia, it doesn't really give you any more power, so to speak. Okay. Uh, But the way that it usually tends to work itself out is the chair can be a good go-between between the board and the county administrator if there's housekeeping issues. Okay. I sit down with the vice chair and the county administrator to discuss the upcoming agenda make sure that if there are certain things that the other Board of Supervisor members want brought forward on the agenda, that we're talking about that and getting that put on. I facilitate things like retreats, try to get dates that work for everyone. We are a little different here in that some of the typical chair roles that I might fill on boards throughout the region. We've done a little differently. You know, we have Mr. Hipple who represents us on the transportation and is the chair there. And that's not something we really wanted to fool around with because we're very fortunate for him to have that. It gets a little tough on some region boards because, as you know, we have mayors in some of the other localities. And so they are elected for longer terms. And so they're able to work their way up in certain leadership positions. Where, Interesting. As on county boards, with when you have a chair rotation like we do, and I think York does as well, mm-hmm. then it's a little tougher to work your way up into some of those leadership roles. But really, my job is to run the meetings. It's also just to try to help facilitate things on the board, housekeeping issues and those type of things. Mm-hmm. Now, you were on the school board before coming to the Board of Supervisors. Were you chair on the school board at any point? I was. I was chair for three years on the the school board. So I have a little bit of experience in in the chair seat. And so very, very similar here. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm glad to do it. I think it's great that it's passed around here. Mm -hmm. Uh, They also do that on the school board. In my particular instance, we were going through... I think a superintendent change possibly. And so that's why I ended up staying on three years. It's typically oh, okay. not a three-year chair on the school board. Okay. They usually do for two. I appreciate the confidence in me by my colleagues mm-hmm. in electing me to that position this year. All right. Now, I was going to ask this later on in the podcast, but you had said that you were chair during a superintendent change and we're getting ready to have a county administrator change. We are. Yes. We have uh, Mr. Porter with us right now, who Mm -hmm. is our acting county administrator. And guest on last week's podcast. Yes, I I did see that. So (laughs) I plan to listen to that this afternoon. I I saw that on social media. I think you do a great job promoting that and I really appreciate that. Thank you. And so, yes, we are in the process of hiring for a county administrator. We had the consultant come to our meeting last evening to start laying out the groundwork for us and the timeline. We're right on our timeline. Uh, Interesting enough, though, when we were looking at the packages that the consultants were bringing forward, it was a very fast timeline. Okay. And that's a little bit more difficult for us because we only meet two times a month. Right. And that's when we can conduct business. Now, we can have a special call meeting, and I'm sure that we will during this process. Okay. But the timeline's not going to go quite as fast as they had it. Okay. But we hope to be doing interviews by May. Wow. And, wow. Mm-hmm, and possibly higher by June, July time frame. May is in two months from now? That's what they say. Wow. So they're developing a profile of the county now, and one that will go out into the different publications to start to attract candidates. Okay. And so, like I said, we're prepared if the, if the process doesn't move that quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, when we're very fortunate, we have an outstanding county staff, and Aww. I include you in that. <laughs> Thank you. That, I mean... I don't know how you feel as a staff member, but it seems like we've had a pretty smooth transition. Yes, and I think it helps so much that Mr. Porter is, that, like I said in the podcast, it's not his first rodeo in James City County. He knows us well. He, he does, and, and Mr. Porter's very, I was just at a meeting with him just <laughs> earlier today, uh-huh. and he's very knowledgeable. 
He's very calm. Yes. Uh, he is very much into buy-in and getting the board of supervisors, giving all the information and, and bringing us along in the process. He has so much confidence in this staff yeah. and was telling me again this morning how what a great staff we have in James City County. And he relies on that. And I think that that has helped with this seamless transition. So we are, like I said, we're in the beginning process and we will be doing a survey. Okay. The consultant will be working on that, that we will get out to stakeholders. And of course, as our public information officer, we'll be relying heavily on you (laughs) to help get us that information out. Okay. And we ask them for it to not be too long of a survey because Mm -hmm. we want people to participate and get feedback. And I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. But we'll be using some of the things that came out of our retreat and what we hope to get, a certain leadership style, a management style, and see if the community also thinks that way and what they think the biggest challenges are facing the county moving forward and what they're looking for in a county administrator. Very good. Now, when you're saying stakeholders, does that include the public at large or is that more businesses and schools and things like that? All of the above. Oh, great. So we're looking for anybody that has anything to do with the county. Okay. So we're going to be looking for citizens, business holders, staff, people that serve on planning commissions, zoning boards. We want to get that feedback from whoever we can. And Mr. Hipple brought up with the consultant last night, is there a way that we might know, not a name, Mm -hmm. but what is your relationship to the county Mm -hmm. so that we can say, okay, well, this is what staff's looking for. Sure, sure. This is what a business owner might be looking for Mm -hmm. so that we can really look at that and get down to that data. Well, I think what we're going to do, we normally try to rotate through the board and have a new board member come every month. But I think when we send this survey out, we may have you come back a little bit early to talk about that. I'd love to come back on. Good. So back to your year as a chairman of the board, what are you hoping to accomplish? We really started, I think, when I first came on to the board, and and it doesn't, not because it was me that came on to the board, (laughs) but when Ms. Sadler and I came on together Mm -hmm. and Mr. McGlennon stayed, but he was reelected at that time, Mm -hmm. and we all have made a real conscientious effort to work together. Uh, Not saying that we're always going to agree. I know our our votes are sometimes very different, but we have tried to really delve into issues, uh, talk about it at the board dais, talk about it at the board table during a work session, how we might vote and walk out of there and knowing that we're all getting along. Mm -hmm. We all want what's best for James City County. Yes. And so what I hope to do this year is just to continue that path that Mr. Hipple and Mr. Onizuk had before me Mm -hmm. and just find ways for us to all work together. It's very important, especially during this search. Sure. We want to get someone here that really wants to be in James City County, knows that they have a board of supervisors that is going to back them up. It's going to support them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're going to stand by our staff And we're going to stand with our community. So those are some of the things that I hope to continue and just keep us on a a good path. Another thing we're trying to do, I came right from a school liaison meeting. Mm -hmm. Mr. Eisenhower and I serve on the school liaison committee. And we sat down with representatives from the city of Williamsburg and from the school board and talked about our joint meeting that's coming up here in a couple of weeks on March 16th. We're going to have a speaker, which is the first time we're going to do that, who's going to share with us as the state contribution to schools has gone down Mm -hmm. and the localities have had to step in, Mm -hmm. what that looks like and what the future looks like. And I think that's going to be great information that we'll all be able to hear and get on the same page about. And we're also talking about facilities. The school's going through their strategic planning. Right. Uh, They're also looking at long-term facility needs and a way that the three localities can come together to actually have a, a tipping point that we all agree on will be when we decide to move ahead with a new facility. Sure. And I think what we've had in the past, and I 
speak from a little bit of experience having been on both sides is we have schools going, okay, we need more space. And then because the financial pressure is on the county and the city, you know, we're trying, okay, are you sure? Are you sure? Right. Show us some more numbers. We need to see more right. numbers. And the schools come and give us more numbers, but then we might question those numbers. Right. We've got to find a better way for the community and for ourselves so that for our long-range planning, the school's long-range planning, and so that's a goal of our school liaison committee moving forward. Okay. And we're going to start talking about it at our very next meeting. And we're talking about now, what's the best way to do it? Is it through school liaison? Is it through doing another working committee? Mm -hmm. But that's very important because education is a huge economic driver for this county. Right. And we're very fortunate in that we have great schools. Yes. But funding's been very tough. Mm -hmm. And where the state has stepped out, we've stepped in. And how do we best continue to do that so that they can continue to be great? And they've got some teacher shortages that they might be concerned about. It hasn't hit this area yet. It has hit other localities near us. Okay. And Dr. Heron brought that up today. And so one thing in Dr. Heron's budget is she's calling for a 3% increase. Okay. And she explained why we are second lowest in our region for starting salaries. Oh, goodness. And that matters. That that really matters. Sure. And and we've, we're very fortunate to have a mix of veteran teachers here. Mm-hmm. And we also want to make sure that we're bringing in the best and the brightest. Right. And our kids deserve that. Those are some of the things that we're trying to work through with the schools. And uh, I really appreciate the citizens of James City County and the commitment that they've made through their tax dollars to our schools. And we need to continue to figure out a way to do that. Well, I think that you have had such a great experience being able to serve on both sides and to come in and really have your history with this really help smooth the way. Well, I appreciate that. And it's been very interesting because the Virginia School Boards Association has had me come speak to their organization. I'm going this summer for my fourth time. Okay. And what I talk about is the relationship between the Board of Supervisors and the city a bit, you know, even though mm-hmm. that's not my that's not my house. I, right. I do talk about it a bit. Right. And the school board. And they have had me talk to their new chairs, their new board members. And it's really an exchange of ideas. And I've learned from them as well. Mm-hmm. But I really appreciate that opportunity because I'm all about if we can strengthen that. Yes. You know, the Commonwealth sets us up in not a good way because the schools have no taxing authority. Right. And so they have to come to us, you know, hat in hand. Mm -hmm. The less we can have angst and the more we can work together, really the better for everybody. So I'm going to continue to work on that and learn and take that knowledge as long as the Virginia School Boards will have me. Well, very good. Well, we are in good hands. Oh, thank you. All right. Now, Mrs. Larson, as you know, I always like to end the podcast with a few fun questions. Okay. All right. Are you game? I'm game. All right. Now, this has been up for debate. I had no idea (laughs) the level of debate, but what is the definition of pizza for you? And what are the basic elements that a pizza must have in order to be considered pizza? Oh, boy. Yeah. So this, it's this kind of hard hitting. Oh, OK. Yes, absolutely. Right. Now, I'm curious because, you know, there's this whole trend now about cauliflower crust. Yeah, crust. Yeah. And I had some. My friend Tammy made some uh, recently and uh-huh. it wasn't bad. Oh. And I so it was my first time and I was really apprehensive to sure. try it. Yeah. Because cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, cauliflower crust. Yeah. But it was pretty good. <laughs> and but for me, I am a big cheese person. Okay. I like thin crust. Okay. And because I really like to be able to taste the ingredients right. that are on the pizza. And I'm, to be frank, I'm probably, a, my favorite pizza is a meatball pizza. Ah, okay. Yeah. But um, I'm not big into a lot of toppings. I'm okay. not a supreme type pizza girl because okay. I like to really taste what I'm eating. Gotcha. Now, the other big question pineapple. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? I've had. I've had that pizza with the ham and the pineapple. Mm-hmm. Pretty mm-hmm. good. So okay. I'm not opposed to that. Well, very, And it's still pizza, even <laughs> it, if it has pineapple That's on. exactly right. Well, very good. There you have it. Okay. All right. Another question that I retired and I've brought back and we're embracing it. Zombies. Zombies are coming, okay, to okay. James City County. Oh. And you have to set up your team 
of who you're going to fight the zombies with. And it can be anyone living or dead. It can be anybody real or make-believe, superheroes, up to you. Oh, goodness. Yep. So say you have three people on your zombie team. Oh, boy. That's tough. (laughs) Because I was going to say my family. Well, sure, um, of course. Okay, so yeah. that's a given. Yeah, because you're protecting them. So then so. I would have to, I would just pluck whoever I could find from Chief Reimheimer's uh, staff or <laughs> Chief Ash. Because oh, okay. I feel like I would be in really good hands. Uh, they are, we are just so blessed with incredible first responders, volunteers in this county. And so I think I'd, I'd have to go that route. Well, there you go. Yeah. Very yeah. So good. So if the chiefs were available. Yeah. You know, hey, I'm, I'm not opposed. So. <laughs> good. Thank you. And thank you for taking that question so seriously. Because You're welcome. it's that important. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And finally, what is the funniest joke that you know by hearts? And it has to be clean because, oh, yeah. you know. I don't, it's not funny. The only, um, my, since my youth, um, my grandparents would tell that knock, knock, who's there, uh-huh. uh, banana, banana who, banana, da, 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 right. and then you got to the end and knock, knock, orange, aren't you glad it's not a banana? Classic. That's, that's the only one I know by heart. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Kind of boring. The, oh, no, that's a good one. But good family memories there. Very nice. Well, then I have to ask you, what do you call cheese that doesn't belong to you? I'm not sure. Nacho cheese. Oh, that's very oh, good. Go. Yeah, yeah, I'll remember that. Yeah, I think I'm. my stand-up <laughs> career is probably not ever going to take off. So I'll be here on the podcast for quite a while. <laughs> well, that's good for us. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much, as always, for coming in. You do such a great job. Thank you for having me. And again, I just want to thank the staff, especially for helping during this county administrator transition time. And thank you all for all that you do every day. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this episode of This Week in James City County. Thank you for listening. Want to make sure you don't miss an episode? Subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. Also, we have a new web page. You can go to jamescitycountyva.gov slash podcast, and you can leave comments, suggestions for future episodes, and you can listen to all of our past episodes, of which I believe we've had 40 now. So, Congratulations. Thank you. So check it out and let us know what you think, and we'll talk with you next week. Mm-hmm.